Alright, and we're back. What is this, like, episode 7 already? I didn't think this game would be this long. I expected it to go, uh, much quicker. So, but, uh, let's continue here. Uh, so we're just waking up. I think it was day... Oh, no, was it day 5 or 4? I don't remember. I think 5. Alright. Doesn't matter. Another day at Sovianok. Alright. We ran. Ran with our last bits of strength. Like those who run for their precious lives. Like a doomed person knowing that there is no hope to save his life still fights the inevitable and his own fate. I hardly managed to close the heavy metal door behind me. I have no idea how deep this bomb shelter is and if it's able to sustain a nuclear blast, but we have no other place to hide. She gripped my hand tight. Don't be afraid. Bits of the ceiling was falling off and the walls were shaking. I was prepared for the worst. But death is such a thing that you can't ever be prepared for it. But suddenly, complete silence fell. It was ringing even louder than the explosions. Maybe it's time to say goodbye. She was whimpering. I wanted to ease her somehow. I realize that there's nothing I can do. Yes, you know I. Ooh. A horrible bang almost broke my eardrums apart. It seems I am under a piece of collapsed ceiling, but I haven't felt any pain. All I wanted was to not let her go. woke up in a cold sweat, losing my breath and gulping for air. It took some time to come to my senses. It was a dream. It was just a dream. My inquired mind, however, refused to believe it. But who was that girl with me there? I didn't want to let her go. I didn't want to let her go off her. What? I didn't want to let go of her hand. So hard. God, it's such bad writing right there. Sadly, I couldn't recall her at all. Clocks were showing a few minutes past ten. I was slowly coming to my senses as reality started to stake out its claim for my mind, and my stomach foully growled. All right, war is war, but lunch should be served in due time. It turned out that Olga wasn't here. She must have decided not to wake me up. Well... Thanks goes to our camp leader for this. After yesterday's adventures, I had to have a rest. Last night, left as a blurry reminiscence, which I really don't want to think about. It's now more important to find something to eat and to wash myself. Exactly. Because a pioneer must always be clean and tidy. Though I would agree with this thesis, even without being a pioneer. And I wasn't one, as a matter of fact. On my way to wash stands, I met Electronic. He started to wave his hands and ran to me. Good morning. Thank you for finding Shurik. Without him, I don't even... It's nothing. I was a bit embarrassed. No, really. Don't be shy much. The country must be proud of its heroes. And what about Shurik? How did he look in the morning? Is he all right? After yesterday's craziness, I thought such a question would be completely valid. Yes, absolutely. The only thing is that he can't remember anything. Can't he? I wasn't surprised at all. He says that he went to the abandoned camp yesterday and then woke up in his bed this morning. I mean, he remembers nothing between those two events. I see. All right, then. You missed the breakfast, right? Come to our club, we'll feed you. I have something special. Electronics smiled in a conspiring way. Thanks, I'll come, probably. I had to wash myself first anyways. We'll be waiting. He waved at me and left to mind his own business. 
There was nobody near the washstands. Water turned out surprisingly warm today. It got warmed up already, I guess. Having my face washed, I realized that it would be, wouldn't be easy to wash the rest of my body here. Maybe I had to go to the showers. But since there is nobody here, I turned the tap in such a way water streamed parallel to the ground, and I started to take off my clothes. And what if somebody sees me? Well, I'll rinse and dry myself quickly and put on my clothes. Water which seemed warm for my hands and face felt bone-chilling cold for my body. The whole washing process took no longer than ten seconds, and I started to wipe myself quickly afterwards. But I haven't managed to finish anyways. There were voices coming in from the footpath direction. The only solution came in a split second. I grabbed my clothes and dashed into the bushes. I'll turn that down a little bit. A moment later, Alyssa and Uliana appeared near the washstands. You could do it by yourself. Why did you get me here? Is it a big deal for you? Fine, let me. I peered at them and noticed that they were both covered in red paint. What a surprise. I wonder how they managed that. Alyssa opened the valve and started to rub Uliana's back. Take off your bra. What if somebody sees us? What? Is there anything to see? She grinned. Okay, just be quick. It was true that there wasn't much to look at. But even then, I stared at girls narrowly. It was a pity that they were standing with their backs to me. A minute later, Alyssa managed to wash off all the paint. I'm done. Thanks. You're welcome. Alyssa replied lazily. Listen, let me try on yours. She pointed at Alyssa's bra. It won't suit you for sure. Well, I'd like to try anyways. And here. There's nobody here, right? Juliana looked my way and smiled archly. I was absolutely sure she couldn't see me in these bushes, but... Enough with that foolishness. Juliana wasn't listening to her anymore and grabbed Alyssa's bra with a dexterous move instead. Now I have to confess, I had something to look at. I was watching two girls chasing one another around the washstands wash with bated breath. Alyssa covered her breasts with her hands so I could barely see anything at all. I leaned forward, and having stumbled over a stone, fell out of the bushes. Alyssa and Uliana stood froze staring at me. I tried to cover my nudity with a guilty face. Such tableau has lasted for a few seconds, and then Alyssa took her shirt and somehow put it on in a moment. You, you, her face gone from red to purple. It looked like she will explode with a nuclear blast any second. The only thing I wanted was to disintegrate into atoms and get as far from the epicenter as possible. He was sitting there the whole time, so she noticed me then. You and I, well I accidentally, if you know what I mean. Alyssa rushed to me. Covering my butt with one hand and holding clothes with the other, I ran into the woods. It seemed the best solution to me at the time, and showing up naked in the middle of the camp accompanied by two screaming girls wasn't a good idea. I ran without looking back, and stopped a few minutes later to catch my breath. It seemed that there was no pursuit, so I managed to save myself, but at the price of lacerated, scratched, and bleeding feet, as I had no time to put on my boots. I sat on a tree stump and sighed. Some time later, having dressed already, I got out of the forest. I need to decide what to do next. My feet are hurting, so I should go straight to the infirmary. But on the other hand, my stomach isn't going to wait either. Maybe I should accept Electronics' invitation, or head to the canteen in hope of something left to eat there. Uh, infirmary. I was always taking good care about my health and even a better care at the times when something start to hurt badly. So without hesitation, I made my way to the infirmary. Right in the front door, I stopped, as if some mysterious force was holding me. I had absolutely no desire to face the camp nurse without any urgent need. On the other hand, I almost did a great dead 
deed yesterday defending the infirmary. So she owed to me in some sense. I took heart and opened the door. Hello, nurse. Hi, pioneer. Hello. I'm sorry that I was so late yesterday. That wasn't a problem at all. Why have you come? Are you sick? She smiled slyly. Well, I'm... I got my feet a bit. You got a bit what? My feet. I gave a stupid answer. Okay, show them. I sat on the couch and took off my boots. How did you manage that? Manage that? I was better keep silent about anything happened near the washstands. Oof. Translation's getting a little bad. Well, I... Okay, never mind. Wait a second. She rummaged in the drawer and took out a big red pill with a cross-shaped notch from the vial. And what is this for? I was disturbed by the size of the pill and its strange form. They are broken in halves usually and not in quarters. This is to make an amputation of your legs unnecessary. What? Nothing. Don't be afraid. Pioneer. He'll take it, and we'll be all right. And why is this pill? It looks like that. Ooh, sorry, my dog is. Quiet, you. That's right. Shut your face. That's for patients who refuse to take medicines. Hmm, perorally. We screw them in with a screwdriver then. I didn't dare to ask where they were being screwed in, actually. And now try to bear it a bit. She took a big pack of cotton wool, wrapped a bud with it, and applied a plenty of iodine to it. I got myself ready for the torments of hell. Yee. I've moaned quietly. But my trust to this method of disinfection was much higher than the odd pill, so I had to stand the burning well. Now it's done. I put on my boots and tried to walk. My feet were still hurting, but sharp pain was gone. Thank you. Don't mention it. Drop in any time, Pioneer. I said goodbye and left the infirmary. My health problem was solved. It's the right time to eat now. The day has just started, and I've gone through so many things already. But I did it, and now I have my legit right to fill myself full. Today, <laughs> today I wasn't the last one, so I could choose a free table. Lunch included a pea soup and mashed potatoes with a fish. That was a major disappointment to me. Okay. It was a major disappointment to me, as I don't eat fish in any form, and hence, I would get fewer calories than usual. Soon, excuse me, soon Slavia and Lena came to my table. Can we... She smiled nicely. Eh? Yes, sure. I stood up and pulled her chair. Please. I was in an excellent mood at the moment. Enjoy your meal. Saying that, Lena started staring at me and continued for some time, but then after realizing that she looked somehow odd, switched to her plate. You too. Do you have any plans for today, Simeon? Nope. I gave an honest answer, as I had no plans indeed, except for searching for answers. But it was more like a global goal. Do you want to have a boat ride to the island with us? The island? Well... I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Olga asked to gather some strawberries. There's a lot of strawberries there, and they're so delicious. I could imagine that taste without even tasting it, just by looking at Slavia's face. Strawberries. And what is that for? I don't know, but it's indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been on the island yet. Yeah, sure. Dot, dot, dot. In ten minutes, we were already standing at the pier. Well, here's the boat. Hang on. I'll go fetch the paddles now. I was left face to face with Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really. But it's tasty. Lena smiled. I see. I didn't know what to say next. How to continue the conversation. 
if Slavia wouldn't be back, we could prob probably be sitting here till the very evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles. Yeah, thanks. We got up into the boat. I untied it, pushed off the shore, and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? Right there. She pointed her finger at the island. This island is named Closest One. I wonder what captain gave it such a name. The island is close to the shore indeed. Aye, aye, Captain. If only I could know what is waiting for me ahead. I wasn't an experienced oarsman, more so. I've rowed a boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we are cutting our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. Approximately in the middle of our path, my arms hurt so badly that I dropped the paddles to get some rest. Well, isn't there any strawberries somewhere else? I mean, in more accessible places. But the tastiest ones grow there. Slavia gave me a puzzling look. It must be hard for you to row on alone. Lena, unlike Slavia, realized everything straight off. Oh, it's nothing. Anyway, I wouldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the path I've spent concentrating on being alive while getting to the island. Slavia and Lena discussed something, but I wasn't listening. That was too much for me. At last, we have arrived. Completely exhausted, I got out on the shore and looked at the boathouse. It seemed so far away that I felt myself... I felt myself like a first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you are. Slavia handed me the basket. It was a small island, hardly 100 meters long, and it looked more like a birch grove with even rows of trees covering the entire surface of it. <coughs> Calm green sea spread beneath our feet, with wind causing lonely waves on its surface from time to time. This island looked like a lost paradise. It's no wonder that the most delicious strawberries grow here. We've got to split up. This way, we'll do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right, my bad. And how are we going to split up then? I'm going to work it with Lena. I'm working it with Lena. Let me go with you. Let's go. Oh, okay, that's fine. Slavia grabbed the second basket and ventured to the farther side of the island. Well, well, let's go. Yeah. Lena smiled. Just pay attention. Don't leave any, any single berry behind. You too. Dot, dot, dot. So, it was the harvest time. Indeed, strawberries were delicious here. I could probably eat it all if I wouldn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to garden ones in size and had a rich red color. So, it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Lena followed me closely, as we only had one basket for the both of us. I felt like a real mushroom picker, examining each shrub and carefully pawing the grass. Well, you're much better than me, am I? Frankly, I'm not even counting them. Yeah, right you are. The basket was already half full. You must be enjoying nature, right? I am. Bright sun rays pierced the tree crowns and blinded me for a second. I sat down on the ground and leaned to a tree. Still, it's so beautiful here. Lena sat down close to me, so close that our elbows touched. Yeah, we just sat and enjoyed the moment. Seemingly, the time stood still. The wind gently shook the tree leaves. Some bugs lazily hopped around the grass, and the splashes of sunlight played a on a faraway water surface. Oh, snap. Lena put her head on my shoulder. I was slightly surprised at first, but then I've heard her regular breathing and thought that it's a matter of course. Probably she felt drowsy and wanted to take a quick nap. I just sat there and haven't thought of anything for a few minutes. 
but then the words started crossing my mind with an ultrasonic speed. Lena, so close, sleeping, so warm, so gentle, feelings. I've gazed upon her. She had such a serene, such a tranquil look on her face that it seemed that right now she's not here, but in some kind of better world. Don't know what would happen the next moment if there wasn't the voice of Slavia that I've heard. Semyon, Lena. I shook my head side to side a few times to come to my senses. Lena started to wake up. She opened her eyes and gave me an empty look. Had any dreams? Huh? Suddenly understanding that she dozed off leaning on my shoulder, Lena blushed. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Slava came to us, and so Lena rushed to get up. So, how much have you got? I sighed. That's not a lot. Our basket was full of strawberries to the brim. Well, it's enough anyway. It's time to get back. I grabbed the basket, and we headed back to the boat. The way back took less time as I tried to concentrate myself on rowing and avoiding everything else. My only wish was to get back alive, as the first trip didn't go by without consequence. Now my hands started to hurt just a few sweep of oars. Having, what's that supposed to be, what word? Having moored up the boat? I had fallen to the ground with no energy left. Slavia, with Lena, leaned over me. You could have said something if it was so hard for you. Yes, never mind, it's fine. I'll just lay here for a bit and everything will be alright. Okay, and get those baskets to Olga, please as we have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree with anything at that moment, just so I wouldn't have to get up. Slavia put the baskets full of strawberries next to me and headed to the square happily chatting with Lena about something. The hardest thing is done anyways. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After the sport paddling, they seemed cement bags while weighing barely above few kilograms each. So the way ba so the way to the camp leader cabin took much longer than usual. I had to stop after every fifty meters to have a rest. <coughs> Once I finally made it, I put the baskets on the ground and sat into the sun lounger with difficulty. Olga Olga, I've got presents for you. There was no answer. I hardly managed to get up and enter the cabin. There was nobody there. If you don't need it, it's up to you. I lay down on the sun lounger and fell asleep. What in the world? I had a weird dream about a strawberry race. I was paddling a boat with my last ounces of strength, trying to escape huge berries chasing me. My hands were failing me, and I could barely see anything because of sweat covering my face blood was hammering in my temples, but strawberries were getting closer. They were baring their teeth at me. But wait, strawberries with the teeth? Semyon, Semyon. I woke up. Olga was standing beside me, shaking her shoulders. I see you got a rich harvest, didn't you? I'll say thanks to the girl's help. Okay, but that's not all. Seriously. I was just anticipating the lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what these strawberries are for? A pie. I'm going to get some pie. Not a single idea. What an honest confession. Damn, it's a cake. We'll make a cake out of it. I see. Well, it makes sense. To honor the miraculous saving of Shurik. And it's all thanks to you. It was clear that getting strawberries wasn't the last thing to do. Then why, please tell me, if I am such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration in my name by myself? Well, I guess. So, I have an important task for you. We are missing yeast, flour, and sugar. And need it all in the canteen before dinner. And those who will make a cake can't deal with it on their own somehow. I have asked pitifully. 
Of course they can't. All of them are busy. And you are the only one in the whole camp who does nothing. While her words were partially true, it doesn't make it any easier for me now. Moreover, those words felt like a bullet to my head. So, write it down. You'll get yeast in the infirmary, flour in the library, and sugar in the clubhouse. Wait, wait a... Uh, I have no time, I'm in a hurry. Good luck. She smiled slyly and left. Of course, there are a lot of strange things in this camp. But yeast in the infirmary, okay, I can deal with that, but... Flour in the library, and sugar, no, it's beyond my comprehension. I spat on the floor. I don't want, and I will not believe this. Tell me, just tell me you're pulling my leg. I would not be surprised if the crowd of green fat trolls would appear here right now beside me, with every one of them feeling obligated to laugh at me. So maybe hell with this cake. I've been weighing my options for some time. No, if such a major, if such a major Olga's plan would fail, I'll get it hot like no tomorrow. And it will complicate both my life and the camp and my search for the answers, which I've stopped for quite a while. It seems I have no other option. Infirmary it is. I feel like I've visited the infirmary too often recently. But what can I do? That's how things pan out. I sighed and knocked on the door. Come in. Nurse said it with a trace of singing accent. Good afternoon. Olga has sent me to get some... I hesitated slightly. Yeast. Ah, sure. She gave me a broad smile. It's just that I don't have any, Pioneer. How so? She said that... Well, I had some, but now nothing is left. I didn't even bother asking why she had to had them in the first place. Well, don't you worry. You can have some aspirin, for example could be of some use for me, actually. Where do I get it, then? Sigh, I sighed. Take this. She opened the drawer and pulled out some kind of bottle. I took a closer look. It was Austin Kinsko we beer. Dot, dot, dot. What's the matter? The beer is also a fermentation product. She gave me a deep gaze. No, nobody will even notice. She had a point, but everything just looked so grotesque to me that I couldn't find anything to say. Are you sure? Absolutely. Okay, then. The bottle clearly didn't fit into the shorts pocket. Well, thanks. I mumbled shyly, leaving the infirmary. Well, beer certainly could replace yeast. Even my limited knowledge of chemistry and biology was enough to accept this. But, generally, walking around with this bottle in my hands looked like a silly idea to me, so I decided to bring it to Olga's cabin and hide it there. But I had to reach it somehow without anybody noticing the beer. I hid the bottle under my shirt. And everything could be fine, but oh, I was called by Slavia at the square. Actually, she sprang out from behind me so, I, so suddenly that I even gave a start. How is it going? What exactly? Your search for ingredients. Ah, so you know already. Yes, I do. Slavia smiled. It's going all right. I answered, trying not to give away my unrest. What do you have there? She pointed at the bottle sticking out from under my shirt. Ah, this. She got me. Ah, it's nothing. I blushed with a silly giggle. It's time to go. I was almost running, leaving the square with puzzled Slavia behind. It's great that she is one of those people who won't ask unnecessary questions. But there are people in this camp who like nothing better than poking their nose into other people's business. Passing Pioneer's cabins, I have stumbled upon Uliana. What are you hiding there? She gave me one of her cocky looks. I thought there was no point in denying anything, so I replied in a provoking manner. It's none of your business. I am a cipher officer bearing a message to the headquarters. You've got a big message. I was carrying a bottle at waist high, so I was slightly embarrassed. You might want some help. I'll deal with it on my own. I walked past her confidently and proceeded my way. 
To my surprise, she didn't say anything nor try to pursue me. There was nobody at Olga's cabin, so I managed to stuff the bottle under my bed successfully. Once I got outside, I sighed with relief. Really, I couldn't believe that I would ever worry about mm, that much about a single bottle of beer. Like I got back into high school. It's a good thing that it's all safe now. Even if somebody will find it, I'll claim that it is not mine. I can always think of a suitable excuse for my enormous experience. Okay, library. If every other place in the cake component list at least made some sense to me, then the flower from the library made none. I thought hard on who and why would want it in the library, but couldn't find any sane explanation after all. Given Xenia's harsh, harsh nature, I better knock first. Open. Xenia had peered at me closely from under her glasses. What do you want? Um, don't think anything wrong, but I need a... I didn't want to look like an idiot and decided to explain things carefully. I need some flour. Olga said that it's here. I understand that it sounds strange to keep flour in the library, but I was sent to you, and it's needed for the cake to celebrate Shurik's rescue. Yes, I have the flour, and what's so strange about it? Xenia replied with surprise. At that second, I felt myself, I felt myself like I got hit with a heavy weight on my head and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flower in the library. Sure, what's so strange about that? We're in the Wonderland. I'm Alice. Now I'm going to eat that magic mushroom and I'll be back home. Hey. Ah, yeah. I was daydreaming. Wait here, I'll be right back. She disappeared behind the bookshelves while I crisscrossed my hands and started waiting. The sound of a trapdoor groaning on its hinges reached me in a moment. Hey, you need some help? I inquired loudly. I'll deal with it. Xenia barked out to me. She seems to be in the basement, so I'll have to wait a little. Okie dokie. A few minutes passed, but Xenia still hasn't returned. I was starting to get worried as the door suddenly flung open and Alyssa came into the library. She looked surprised too, seeing me here. What are you doing here? Am I not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. Alyssa was clearly overwhelmed a bit. Ah, uh, why do I care? She snorted off and headed to Xenia's table. And why are you here then? Alyssa measured me with her eyes carefully and almost opened them, her mouth to say something, but then seemed to change her mind and turned away hiding her hands behind her back. Returning a book, she, I blurred the first thing from the top of my head. It's none of your business. She replied with a tint of hesitation. What book is it? Alyssa was silent. <clears throat> oh, come on, let me see it. I wonder what does Miss High Voltage keep away reads. It's none of your business. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay. I don't insist on anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Alyssa was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see a book in her hands. TV, movies, or a computer, if it would be available here. All these things seem to be much more appropriate entertainment for a girl like her. But she had a book instead. I'll just stay on guard. Curiosity killed a cat. Anyway, it's Alyssa, and that means it could quickly turn into a total mess. Plus, I still have some ingredients to collect. Well, I'll come later. Alyssa left the library quickly without looking at me. It got me thinking. What this book could be about if she was so ashamed of it. Ashamed Alyssa is something out of the ordinary by itself. But Alyssa, ashamed about a book. But what's the point in guessing now? There is no way to find anything out. Finally, a deep groan of Xenia rang out, re ever re reaching each and every corner of the library. Grab it. I passed by the bookshelves and behind the perspiring library, sitting near the trap door leading into the basement, and a small sack next to her. Well, I might have some sort of storehouse down there. Thanks. I took the sack and got out of the library. 
Thank goodness, it wasn't too heavy, so I've carried it down to Olga's cabin without too much effort. <clears throat> why are there, no, I was like, why are there two clubhouses? It's just one. It felt like I've gone through more things today than all previous days combined. Thus, coming closer to the clubhouse, I've even forgotten to think about how awkward it must be to look for sugar there. Oh, jeez. Shurik, with Electronic, were building something enthusiastically. They were so busy that they didn't even notice me. I looked closely. It was some kind of a robot, or at least a body of it. More so, this robot was a female and had ears. I didn't want to make up theories about purposes of such a device for luminaries of camp cybernetics. Even though design looked practically workable, I had my doubts about this robot to ever conquer Earth, or at least be able to do anything on its own. But they seemed to be enjoying the process more than the end result itself. And it was something we shared, even though I didn't want to admit it. On the other hand, they weren't afraid of possible failures, criticisms, or jokes. They were working towards their goal without paying attention to others. Who could call it unrealistic or even absurd? Oh, it looks like I'm truly comparing them to some luminaries of sciences. Hey guys. I greeted them uncertainly. Oh, Semyon, come in. We're always glad to see you. I actually was in already. You know. Sorry for what happened yesterday. I barely remember anything, but, well, never mind, it's okay. And what led you to the humble abode of ours? The electronic looked at me slyly. Sometimes, I felt like he'd make such a face when he surely knows something about the other person. Something he can use in a right moment. Sugar. I need sugar. An image from an ancient video game suddenly came into my mind. Some kind of unit, like a builder or something, cried out loud from all its five pixel stature gold. We need more gold. We got it, said Electronic calmly. Why would you want it? I felt that I shouldn't explain to Shurik that they want to bake a cake for him. I shouldn't spoil a surprise. I don't know. Olga told me to get some. Okay, hang on. Electronic disappeared behind the door into the next room. Why do you have sugar here? Why not in the canteen? When a food truck came last time, it was the only thing to unload. And given that our building is closest one to the entrance, they decided to leave it here to save some effort. It's reasonable, isn't it? No, it's not. The door is opened, revealing an electronic hauling a huge bag behind him. I really didn't know what would be the size of the cake, but that was obviously too much sugar. Well, thanks, but I don't need it all. But where could we place it? Electronic gave me a surprised look. We don't have a place for it. You asked for sugar, so take it. It seemed that the previous smile of his wasn't there without a reason. Maybe you'll help me then. It's not that far to carry. We are busy. He pointed his hand to the robot. I gazed at Shurik. He owed me in the end. He halted, then looked away in shame. I sighed, took the bag, and headed to the door. Thanks anyway, said I at parting, exerting myself. But I didn't manage it too far. Just after a mere twenty meters, I had to put the bag down to have a rest. I had no idea how much it weighed. It felt more than twenty kilos. On one hand, it was just two hundred meters to the canteen. On the other hand, even such a distance with this payload on my shoulder, or eventually in my hands, or on my two legs, or under my arm, or even on my head, looked impossible for me to cover. And as I have set myself to move in minor sprints with prolonged pauses between them, so I couldn't get there, by night at least, I have heard a voice behind me. Maybe I could help you. I saw Lena in front of me. I don't think you can. It was one of those moments when I painfully felt my dramatic lack of good shape. I could bring a handcart. A handcart? Why haven't I thought about it myself? Yes, that would be great. Wait here, I'll bring it. I'll be right back. She smiled and ran in the direction of the square. And 
what could I do without her? It's good that Lena isn't always that shy and can take the initiative sometimes. I started to think. She seemed quite unusual now, with no trace of shyness on her face, and actually complete opposite smile and confidence. The offer of help wasn't something extraordinary by itself, but getting it from Lena. A few minutes later, she came back with a smallish handcart and put a bag down on it. Thanks. Don't mention it. She blushed and looked down. Okay, oh, Lena, we all know his back. So I'll go then. Yes, yeah, see you. And thank you again, I shouted after her. Sometimes I felt like there were two different persons living inside of Lena, but the second one, confident, happy, and sometimes even bold, appears just when she talks to me. Or am I making it up again? I thought that it would be better if I get all the ingredients at once, so I headed to Olga's cabin with the handcart. Finally, it seems that everything was collected. I got the handcart with sugar outside and put the sack with flour on it, followed by two baskets of strawberry that fitted somehow in between, and beer was under my shirt just in case. The day was coming to its end, so I had to hurry as cake itself needed some time to be baked. Of course, I'd rather enjoy lying down, closing my eyes, and getting a decent sleep, but I just couldn't let Olga down. Indeed, after all the troubles, I even felt my personal responsibility for the success of this event. Coming to the square, I stopped for a moment to take a breath. It wasn't the cart that was heavy. It ran smoothly, without any noticeable efforts required. Just any physical load caused pain to me now, both physical and a moral one. Blink. I sat down on the bench and closed my eyes for a moment. What's that? I wasn't really giving a damn on who it is. Probably just a fellow pioneer girl who got interested in an unfamiliar companion in distress. What are you talking about? I asked her tiredly. She didn't reply. That's the ingredients for a cake. Do you like cakes? I don't know. What? You've never tried any cakes? I don't know. Obviously, girl, couldn't, hmm, obviously this girl couldn't get what I was talking about, but it didn't surprise me at the moment. I really wasn't interested in that conversation. I was so tired that I had zero intention to classify all outer distractions and tag them, either as conventional or uncommon. I see. Come down to the canteen later and take a bite. Really? Really. And what are they made of? What? I asked with indifference these cakes. Well, some flour, some sugar, various fillings. Now that's a queer question. Doesn't she know what our cake's made of? And you have it all here. Yeah, sort of. And sugar, and sugar. Could you lend me a little? What for? I thought it was over the top. Unblink. A sudden gust of wind made me grab the cart instinctively and open my eyes. However, nobody was here. My daydreaming. I've noticed through, though, that the sugar sack was untied, and a small heap of it had been poured out. It could be that she was scared away by wind and ran away. Having the sack fixed, I got up from the bench and continued my challenging strawberry way. There wasn't a single person near the canteen. No wonder. Dinner was still an hour away. I brought the handcart to the rear exit and handed the foodstuffs to the camp cook. She must have been told already what to do with them, and she gave me such an unpleasant look. I'm not sure how long it takes to bake a cake, but she had to hurry, it seems. I just wanted to relax <clears throat> during the remaining time up to the dinner. In short, I was so tired that I sat on the footsteps just waiting. Blink. My eyes have closed themselves. I guess I got so tired throughout the day that didn't I that I didn't even notice how someone came and patted me on the shoulder. One blink. Miku Hi. Miku was standing before me. Yeah? And didn't need a mirror to imagine an expression of skepticism and annoyance on my face. Oh, excuse me. I must have interrupted you. No problem, I was just sitting here. Ah, uh, alright then. Miko shined with a smile. I was just coming to dinner. 
I thought that it's time already, and then it appeared to me that it's too early. But I've decided to check out, check, just in case. Maybe it's not me who is mistaken, but the clock is. Well, not the clock. Clocks can't be mistaken. It's just that I have misread it. She seemed to be ultimately confused now, and thus went silent. It's still about a half an hour before the dinner. Oh, that's great. Then I'll sit here and wait with you if you don't mind. Frankly speaking, I would mind. You know, I have some matters to attend to. I stood up quickly and left without saying goodbye, and ignoring Miku, as I always did, while she was screaming something after me. A minute later, I got to the square and sat on the bench with a firm intention to find a quiet and safe place here to wait for dinner. I think it is the first time since the last four and a half days when I feel myself like that. I wasn't just irritated because of some in insignificant details, but indeed, I was really angry. I've completely stopped to care where I am and why I'm here. I didn't care about how to get out either. What was driving me mad is that I always had to carry out some stupid task given by our camp leader, and it was always me who gets into stupid situations, and sometimes even ends up being a clown. If all this is some alien trick or plot of the universal mind, they better consult with their psychiatrist. I gritted my teeth and clenched my fists. And most annoying thing is that everything that happens to me happens by itself somehow. What? I'd be happy not to carry bags of sugar weighted a good pound. But I had no choice at all. I mean, any other option would lead to much worse consequences than a muscle strain or hurt pride. Who are you angry with? Juliana was standing in front of me and smiled slightly. Nobody, really. I have answered absently, but my fist gave me away. Just like that. Okay, okay, it's up to you. You better tell me, why did you run around the camp for the whole day with some kind of bags? I had to. I replied reluctantly. I guess it was food. Maybe it was. Juliana was about to say something, but at that moment the bell came, sound came, calling the pioneers for dinner. I sighed in relief and quickly headed to the canteen, leaving Juliana behind. Semyon, thank you very much. For what? The camp leader gave me a friendly smile. For the cake, of course. Ah, sure. It was that exact moment I understood the true meaning of an idiom. Keep your thanks to feed your cat. You haven't told anybody. This ought to be a surprise. Yeah, that's my boy. And now, off you go to dinner. Olga waved her hand, pointing at the canteen. I stepped over the doorway slowly and started to look for a free place. It turned out there are plenty today, so I got a chance to eat all alone. There was a fish, there was fish with mashed potatoes for dinner. What misfortune once again, I'll end up half hungry. And didn't we have fish for lunch? Is it fish only today today? Blink. Having pushed a plate with fried sea dweller away, I laid my head on my hands and closed my eyes. But soon somebody came to my table. Hey, are you alright? I'm fine. I replied without changing my position. Just tired. Yeah, a little. That's bad. Slavia said it seriously. Of course. You remember that we are going to take a hike after dinner, don't you? Have you prepared everything? Unblink. What? Where? I opened my eyes and lifted my head up instantly. Lena was standing by Slavia the hike. She was surprised. Didn't you know? No. I put my head down on the table and covered it with my hands. If only I could sink into the ground right away. The girls remained silent. I stayed alone with my thoughts for some time, and that was fine to me. Maybe I could sit that way until the end of dinner time, but a strong voice of Olga was heard from the opposite part of the canteen. Guys, to celebrate a miracle rescue of our friend and comrade Shurik, we bake this cake for you all. I lifted my head idly and looked towards the camp leader, but couldn't see anything behind Pioneer's backs. A second, just a second, and nothing about me, nothing about me rescuing Shurik, 
are gathering the ingredients for the cake. As if that's how it ought to be. Well, it would be wrong to expect anything else from my camp leader. Let's go. We won't get our share. Slavia smiled. Let's go, Lena agreed. Yeah, sure. I got up with reluctance and tagged behind the girls. As we approached the pioneer crowd, Olga was just putting the cake on the table center. And now... What's going on there? The camp leader was... wasn't able to finish as Uliana rushed up from the pioneer crowd and dived into the cake. She managed to nibble it a few times before she was actually pulled away. She was kicking and screaming. I stared blankly from outside all this drama, smiling. Smiling Alyssa. Lena that picked up some cream with her finger. All the furious pioneers around. I felt completely out of this place. I thought that I, if I closed my eyes now and opened them again, here I am, back to the safety of my apartment in front of my computer. Blink. Unblink. I blinked, but nothing has changed. Only the noise and the clutter became sharper. Uliana, that's the limit. I just, well, in fact, behaving like this is a bit over the top even for her. Shirk has broken in the conversation, or the court-martial. Please, Olga, hence the cake is celebrating me, it's no big deal. He hesitated. It doesn't matter. The camp leader turned to Uliana, and you. Today, I'm going to prosecute you to the fullest extent, so you'll behave next time. Ah, whatever. She snorted and turned back. You won't be going for a hike with us tonight. As if I wanted to. I was more than willing to switch places with Uliana and skip the hike instead of her. But who knew? If I would have guessed beforehand, I'd be the first one to go berserk and smash down that damn cake. After a couple of minutes of confusion, Pioneer started to dismiss. You have to get ready, too. There will be a lineup in the square in half an hour. I looked straight into the eyes of the camp leader, trying to express my attitude in a non-verbal way, but it seemed that I have failed. Don't be late. Juliana was sitting at the table when I approached her on my way to the exit. So why did you do it? She looked very upset, but she had a right to be so. I wanted to. Juliana replied abruptly. So, you're happy now. Of course I am. And you have a good luck, have good luck hiding, ugh, hiking. She smiled mischievously, springed up and rushed out of the canteen. Well, a little bit of luck won't hurt. <clears throat> Walk and you shall reach. It was exactly this proverb that kept twirling in my head all the way down the camp to the camp leader's cabin. Somehow, I just couldn't manage to oppose, to pretend that I'm sick or to just skip it without reason. The events of this day taught me submission, although sometimes whatever was happening made no sense to me. As I walked in, I had taken a thought. Well, in fact, how should I get ready? Clothes. I only have an overcoat and a pair of jeans. Anyway, I've forgotten to ask whether it's going to be overnight hike or not. Couldn't think of anything better. I grabbed the sweater that I had on me when I arrived in the camp. The night might be fairly chilly, and shuffled off to the square slowly. All the camp was already there, although it was about ten minutes up to the time designated by Olga. I snuggled near the edge and waited patiently. The night was falling. If we are to be looked at from the outside, a fairly comical picture it would be. A crowd of pioneers lined up out of sheer habit it was like waiting for a silent command from bronze genda and that'll be all for this episode